evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the February 18, 2020 Board of Selectmen's meeting. Could I have a roll call? Well, first, let me remind everybody that we came into session at 6.30. We immediately went, uh, left open session and went into um, executive session, came out of executive session, and now we are opening our regular session at 7.30, 7 o'clock. Um, could I have a roll call, please? Um, all five selectmen are present, as well as Doreen, Allen, England, <laughs> and um, Town Council. Okay, next would be the Pledge of Allegiance. Gary, can you lead us? Thank you very much. Okay, announcements, Alan. Old people strike again. Uh, we have early voting February 24th to February 28th at Town Hall. If you don't want, you want to avoid the rush later on, makes it a lot easier. Jim. Um, CMW has a subcommittee meeting at um, 9 a.m. on Atlant 13, Atlantis Ave, and Marion tomorrow. Okay, Peter? No. Mary? No. Okay, I have one. Uh, the drop-in center opens tomorrow, is open tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Anybody having problems, alcohol, drugs, any of those kinds of issues, they're there for you. Go ahead in. They're, they're, I'm telling you, they can help you. Trust me. Go in there. It'll be the best thing you ever did for yourself. And further, if anybody is having trouble dealing with somebody who's on drugs, a relative, a friend, whatever, and you don't know how to do with it, you don't know what to do about it, you can go there and they'll find some help for you as well. So tomorrow, 5 o'clock, drop-in center. It's at the Church of the Good Shepherd on High Street. Okay? All right. Next is citizens' comments. Anybody here to speak to us tonight? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Board comments, Alan. Uh, let's see. Just a couple quick ones. The uh, Swiss Beach Road, just want to uh, reaffirm to everybody that that particular project is part of the Route 6 corridor study, but it's also been taken up by uh, Mass DOT uh, Region 5 as a separate item that they're working on. I don't know how long it's going to be, but it is, it is sitting on the actual transportation improvement program as of now. So we'll see what happens there. Um, the other thing is the uh, Tahonet Road Route 28 um, intersection for a traffic light that uh, originally the fire chief asked through the police chief to see what I could do. And it was kind of reported as if the state was going to pay 80% and the town was going to pay 20%. Uh, that particular project, uh, the paperwork went back to everybody and it said from Pamela Hasner, which is a dot DO5 uh, person in charge of it that the actual intersection even though it qualifies for light doesn't meet the criteria for an emergency or a high basically a high risk area for mass dot at this time since they have the same issues we do with a limited budget so as far as the state goes right now they will not be putting any light in so it's up to the, the way it came back to me was it's up to the town and the town should be looking at uh basically looking to see if any uh developer in the area over the last five to ten years has anything on their conditions or anything that requires a developer when you hit a certain traffic number to do something. We have that with Walmart, we have that with Charlotte Furnace Road, but I asked Ken Buckland to look at it as well. We have nothing in records that show that. So this is going to be a problem for us to do on our own. Okay. Jim? Pass. Peter? <clears throat> uh, we have a dog hearing coming up tonight which we are thinking about uh, you know whether we should go back and take a look at what we've done in prior dog hearings in some of these cases we've issued orders uh, if the board's happy with it I'd like to take the lead and work with the animal control officer and try to come up with status updates uh, to see when she's uh, inspected these properties to see what the compliance is and so on and so forth because it doesn't do us a lot of good to sit up here and you know we hear a case we issue orders and then we don't know if they're followed up on so I would I would just ask for the board's consensus uh, to allow me to go ahead and work with uh, the director of natural resources and the animal control officer to just get a sense of where we are with these things and then report back to the board. I think it's a great idea. 
You volunteered. You're a winner. Okay, great. Okay. Huh? That's all, all right, Mary, you have anything? No, nope, good. Okay, next is uh, uh, appointments, reappointments, and interviews. Zoning Board Appeals, Russell Model. All right, we just have here? one. Is Russell here? Yeah. Is Mus Russell here? No. No, okay. All right. We, I, we get an okay. I believe we got an okay from the board. We do. So. Yeah. Do we? Huh? You got an okay? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's in the... I, I went and dug up... Um, I went and spoke with Ken, and I dug up some old minutes. And um, no, is he right there? From the Zoning Board of Appeals, back in October, he hadn't been to any of the meetings yet. They did vote to support him, but one of the recommendations—it's not a requirement recommendation—is that they attend three meetings. He, I don't know if he's attended any. He's not here tonight. Well, we have a recommendation from Nazi, right? From the board. Right. I have, like I said, I went and looked up the meeting. Yeah. Minutes. And, um, we'll we'll see forward what how you like. I would probably suggest to continue until we can contact him to see if he's interested in coming and talking. The office has followed the application from Mother David Williams, who is interested in serving the Zoning Board of Appeals. We have not received a response to our previous emails that Cassandra sent. Oh really? Yeah. I'm not well, building off on that. Yeah. This okay. is this is we'll from an right. we'll associate's position anyways. Yeah. You know, they're, they're we'll trying to put on. someone in place because one of the ZBA members has given notice. Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. We we'll that. we'll hold off on it. Okay. Okay, uh, license and permits we have none. The dog hearing is at seven fifteen. We're gonna kinda go by that for now. We're gonna go uh, let's bring Gary down to discuss the vote on smelt. That would be E on your thing. Hey, Gary. Hi, good evening. So every year the uh, Board of Selectmen has to vote on regulations for the smelt fishery. Um, I did uh, alert the board that uh, due to some construction project that is taking place by the Buzzards Bay Coalition uh, down at Station Street, obviously the site is uh, unaccessible right now because of the fencing, construction, there's debris everywhere. Um, they have closed it currently to um, public access. So uh, unfortunately, I think we don't have a choice this year but to not allow access to that area for fishing, which is under the control of the Board of Selectmen. This is the only um, act relative to its kind in the state. This is, this is one of the few that allows the fishery to take place during spawning um, up a river such as this. So the, um, uh, right now, um, I was down there today uh, with the state and the, installed the fike net, which they utilize to catch the smelt that come up the river and other migratory fish. Um, so that's in, so they're getting ready for the season to start ramping up. So we have a, we have a variety of species that they do check uh, that come through there. The um, actual construction within the waterways has stopped uh, per orders of the uh, Division of Marine Fisheries because of the fish passage. So as of Friday, they're done with all of the waterways workings right now. So the river is open. It's, it's, this is the first time the river has actually had free passage in almost 200 years. So. Um, in looking in this for this year, um, the state has asked me on a numerous occasions, um, uh, Mr. Brad Chase, he's the um, in charge of the uh, migratory fish program for Division of Marine Fisheries, and um, he is in complete support of this because of the amount of um, time and effort he's put into studying the smelt passage that we really, it's, it's, it's time to start looking at this fishery. And um, the only person that has control of this fishery is the Board of Selectmen, so we just, we're bringing it before you to take a look at. He unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. He's tied up on other meetings, but he's willing to come in and actually uh, bring all of his statistics with him and, and uh, everything that he's documented under the last 16 years of him. I, I mean, he's really the master of this waterway on species coming in. Last few years, he's caught maybe 10 fish um, he's done a lot of searching for eggs uh, before the dam was out where they usually lay in that uh, stream section where the grass is and the riprap and the old uh, ore that's in the waterways. That's where they usually settle their eggs and he uh, hasn't found much of anything. Your average fish will lay 30,000 eggs. 
um, and upwards more as they return every year. As they get more mature, they'll lay more eggs as well. And he's not finding much of anything. So I, I just... So it, what do you want us to do, Gary? I think it's, uh, you know, I'd like to see the, uh, we have to act on it this year. Um, and I, I'm, I'm open to your entertainment of having uh, Mr. Chase come in and actually give you a presentation so you have some more backing on it. But he's willing to. I, I think we can trust you. Yeah. To, to, I, I, but what do you want us to do? Well, I think we have to go for an indefinite, um, and it's just as a recommendation, an indefinite uh, postponement of, of this type of fishing at this site. Um, it, you know, I, I think we're just in a time of, you know, when you're looking at fisheries, you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. You know, if you don't regulate it, you, you know, it goes wild. If you do regulate it, you're the bad guy also. It just, well, I, I think we're in a time of where we're stuck with facing some realities that, you know, fisheries are, are hurting. I mean, we look at with the oysters, we look at with everything that... We, we have to, you know, it was always look at the fisheries, look at the fisheries, look at the fisheries. I mean, my grandfather in the 60s used to go there and, and catch his smelt. I mean, it's just that it was a tradition, um, you know, and, I, and, I, and it, it hurts to, to see so many people, such as Charlie Maxim, which I referenced in, you know, my, uh, my request on this. It's just, you know, these guys have been there for generations doing this fishery, and it's a family thing, and it's handed down, and it's, it's but I... I I hate to be in this point and, and sticking this on us and everybody that we have to make a decision such as this. I'm I mean, not a real big fan of indefinite stuff. I wouldn't mind doing it for, and for my personal. I'd yep. say maybe three years, and then we'll check it again sure. in three years. Uh, absolutely. See what it looks like. But indefinite, I'm really not a big fan of indefinite. And indefinite can be reviewed. It can, you know what I'm can saying? Be, can be re-entertained. But, but if we too, do it every so. three years, it's going to come up automatically. Yep. If we do it indefinitely, you tend to forget it. And then, you know, maybe you never get back Absolutely. to it. You know, that's all I'm saying. One of the big things that um, Mr. Chase was stressing is the fact that where this waterway is now open, this is giving them a whole new opportunity to invest more time in studying the fisheries and, and mm -hmm. seeing the passage because you're not looking at the fishery at being that location anymore. You're, you're looking at an area now that is now open to passage completely. So the chances of the fish still going to that location might be there, but at the end of the day, they may be passing through and going up river more. Right. So, I mean, we have, we may have completely changed the whole outlook of how this fishery is going to be handled. And you may not have that collection. Uh, you know, it's nighttime, you know, your fishing is so limited anyway. You got to look at your incoming tides. You got to look at your nighttime fishing because that's when they spawn. Um, I've heard stories, you know, when they would catch the egg bearing fish, they would squeeze the fish and, and, and push the eggs, but that wasn't natural. So your, your eggs aren't setting in those locations. They're, you know, when they, they're coming up to spawn, they have a method, and it's, it's not our method. So, um, Anybody I, else have questions? Go ahead, Alan. Is this the Horseshoe Dam that we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That opens up the area. I'd rather go for one year and come back simply because we're talking about other things along that riverway as well. And a year from now, we could have a whole different situation we could. that we have to monitor. So yeah, we are. Yeah, like and go, I, I'd I like definitely, to go ahead and do it for a year and then come back again. I, completely, I agree completely. I, and I think uh, with the offer of Mr. Chase coming in, I think it's really important to hear what he has to say. He's, he really is. A, well, a, a, Alan's right. We may be changing that area pretty, yeah. pretty, actually, pretty actually, significantly yep. coming up. So Well, they, I mean, you're, you're talking you know, a $700,000 plus project going on in there. That's a serious, serious undertaking. Yeah. Uh, with you know, with hopefully a lot of proactive movement towards the rebuilding of a, quite a okay. few species for the fisheries. Anybody so, else questions? No, just just for an update. I used to be one of the marine fisheries uh, commissioners for the state of Massachusetts for quite a while, so I'm still on their mailing list, etc. I know Mr. Chase very well, and I do get constant updates what's going on, so I am familiar with the issue. Okay, so does anybody else have anything to yeah, say? This is um, that's a depleted fishery. And, um, you know, people go down there at night, you won't get a meal out of it. No, no unfortunately not. Um, if anything. <laughs> a little fish anyway. But the, um, <laughs> not much to smelt anyway. With, with the work that uh, the coalition's doing, then they're going to extend the uh, riprap up above the dam so it'll provide more breeding area. And, and as Gary said, they might even go up further up, uh, up river. Um, I would say you know, a year is fine. You know, three-year would probably be a minimum in five to really see and to let the uh, smelt, uh, if they can, reestablish their, their, that is a 
a, you know, a viable uh, breeding um, and a not, not a depleted fishery. Okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> I think a year moratorium is good. It's also more legally sustainable. Should anybody challenge it if you put a, uh, if it has to be renewed rather than if you just put it up as an indefinite Absolutely. moratorium. Fine so. Mary? One year, you're good with one year? One year, whatever you want. We can uh, definitely address it. And like I said, I'd love to bring some more information to you. Uh, he just wasn't available tonight. Okay. So. All right, can I have a motion from somebody? So made. <clears throat> motion made by Alan for a year. Second. Do I hear a second? Second from Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. You got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, and would you we'll, like we'll deal with it again next next year. Yep, okay. absolutely. Would you like me to stay for the uh, articles? I know we, you're um, doing some For your them. articles, sure, yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm free, yours, so. you're pretty much boilerplate stuff anyway. Yeah, so. it's nothing. It's just some, uh, you know, we have some uh, it's just interest stuff, payments. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And it, that's, okay. yeah do you have I, any I, questions I, on any of that? As a matter of fact, I We did. can do them right now if you no, want. No, I can wait. I can. No, we can pull I, them I out right now and get it out of the way. Well, we got the dog here. Well, we don't have to, well, we can't start before 715. We can start after. Yeah, we're going to hold on. a $4,000 dockage fee for a boat? Um, right now, because we have to keep it at the marina. So we ended up, we, we've been going for a few years uh, through a, a settlement between DEP where we were actually not charged for dockage for quite a few years. Um, and that was through a settlement of a previous owner of the marina, but the current owner has to pay the fines through the, through the process. And DEP would rather have in-kind services turned back to the town as opposed to going into a a cash fine so they they made the agreement with the town to be allowed to utilize dockage for four years in lieu of payment of their um uh the fine but that has now ended so we still have to pay just like the fire department pays we have anybody that's right. in the arena so, but why do we need to use their facilities i don't have another facility to utilize that's secure that i mean we we look at cameras we're looking at access we got parking I can't leave it at Bessie Park. I can't leave it at Tempest Knob. Not that I don't trust the areas, but we have a lot of areas. We have some concerns. Uh, Onset Pier, we can't leave it there. I, well, we, are, we have two boats. We have one in Onset and we have one in Wareham. So we, we utilize two, two main patrol boats. So that one is that one's stationed out of the Wareham River. So that's was Murray? Yes, correct. In the Wareham River? Yep. Yep. The response times out of onset to the rest of the town would be too much, so that's why he's got two. Yeah, we just I, I understand yeah. That, um, but no, if I had a well, if we had a facility, I definitely you know we you know obviously we entertain it, but right now this is just. Well, we'll build you a marina. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, dockage is a lot cheaper we, we for have, sure. We, we I'm have kidding. Dockage and, and whatnot, and I understand the point about security. It just brings to question why we're spending. Four thousand dollars a year. That's, on that. It's the footage. That's what you know. We have our marinas are running one hundred and fifty to one hundred and ninety some odd dollars a foot right now. Unfortunately, can't keep it any place else. My house. Nothing else. You know, I don't have any. I don't. We don't have private docks. We don't have um, anything, and we've utilized this location because it's it's centralized and and it's just part of it. Unfortunately, this is the only place that we have to pay dockage for. So we utilize the pier with our other boats. We have boats out of moorings. And uh, so this is the only dockage expense that we are contending with it's, is this one. So. Any other questions about this, Seems about his, uh, his articles? No. Everybody knows what they are. Yeah. Okay, you're all set, Gary. Okay. Thank you, you guys have a good coming. night. Thank Thanks. you. Gary, have a good dinner. Thanks for coming. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring Ken up. We're going to get to the dog hearing. It's going to just hang in there a little bit, okay? Come on up, Ken. Thank you. So what do we have with you? We have several issues, right? One is uh, you're part of the proposed authorization of the town administrator to negotiate that host agreement. Correct. And we're all set with that now. I mean, you've, you've looked this over, or what's the deal? Well, what we want to do is uh, our standard host community agreement with another business going into uh, the, the old Cranberry Complex. Okay. All right. So does anybody have any questions of him about about that particular entity or anything? Uh, just the terms While he's of here. the usual uh, standard terms. Standard terms, yeah. Three and three or just straight three? It's just a straight three because it's not a retail operation. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Is that, right. is that like within the entire complex or is that a separate building, freestanding building? It's within or? the complex itself. 
renovated space. That will be renovated for that purpose? Correct. They will have to meet all the state security requirements and everything else. Is anybody here from that organization? Yeah. Why don't you come, why don't you join us? Come on down and kind of give us a little bit of what you have to. Michelle. Michelle. Thank you for the help. Good. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do you want to uh, run us through this? Uh, sure. Kind of as quick as possible. Yep, right. you've got it. So my name is Michelle Hansen. I am a partner in addition to Steve Saper in a company um, seeking a manufacturing license uh, at uh, 3065 Cranberry Highway. Um, we are looking to uh, get a cannabis, manufac um, cannabis extraction and processing uh, license through the town. Um, <clears throat> we'll extract and manufacture a variety of uh, marijuana infused products. Um, this will be closed to the public. It is not a retail site as stated previously. We will sell directly to um, other manufacturers and um, direct to the retail market. Uh, we are an experienced team <clears throat> of professionals with a diverse set of skills and resources that we feel will help us to successfully operate the facility. We have a combined. You might want to pull that mic a little closer. Sorry, I'm a little low talker. You talk quietly, so. I am a low talker, sorry. Um, the team's combined skills include over 60 years of business development experience, leadership, manufacturing, and operations. Uh, we are committed to um, a professional and responsible implementation of this new business in Wareham. Uh, I, my background is I'm a senior uh, business development consultant. I'm a certified business analyst. I've spent uh, about 30 years in the corporate sector um, developing business strategy, um, risk management, and um, developing compliance programs. And I have uh, 30 years of experience running operations in heavily regulated industries. I'm going to turn it over to my, my partner, Steve, and Thank he can you. introduce himself. Very brief. Um, I apologize for the informal headshot on the deck, but I'm pretty proud of that fish. <laughs> um, yes, you are. <laughs> and it was released for the gentleman that was concerned about the fishery. It was released. <laughs> um, so uh, my name is Steve Saper. I'm a, a co-owner in uh, You Can Be Co, LLC. I'm an Army veteran, um, chem nuke weapons expert uh, for the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, also a former finance uh, pro with business development, technology, and operations experience, about 30 years in the, um, the public sector there. And the only reason why we wanted to uh, let you know who we were is so you knew who was asking to come to your town and conduct business with you. Um, but we have the, um, the skill, uh, experience, and resources to begin, complete, and execute on the project we're proposing. Um, the rest of the deck, I know you guys want to move this along, is really just a restatement of what I imagine you already know, the HCA process. Uh, so we are here to uh, ask you all um, to consider our request for a host community agreement in your town. Okay. And I believe you have the business plan documents with some high-level financials uh, already in, in your possession. Do you have those folks? Yeah, they're, yep. uh, they're in the thing. Hmm? I believe they're, they're in the file, right? There's, there's one here if you need as well. There's one there. I think there's one. Oh, there's one here too, yeah. There's one in the folder too, I think. No. No, it's not in there? We didn't get those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Okay. We can certainly get those to you. Yeah, we'll get them to you. No, I actually, there's an attachment in here, but it's, they're not, they weren't printed off. When four I attachments see. didn't get in there. Okay. It's supposed to be four attachments. Are they on the, on the, on the packet? Have, no. There's a link. I don't recall seeing there's that. a link, I think, to the, I think you're right. I think it's a link, right? Yeah, there should be a link. To the attachments. Uh, I can't. In, the, in our packet? Yeah. I can't click on it. Oh, you've got a photocopy of it, so. Okay. 
Maybe All Ken right. could get those to us. He's got it right there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an electronic version. Yeah, yeah. It's we just have to authorize. All we're going to do is authorize us to negotiate the contract, the, uh, the thing anyway. That's correct. And that's all we really, they need from us right now is to allow them to start the negotiations in order to come up with an agreement. So that's all they're asking for right this minute. All right, I move. Question? Any, go ahead, Alan. Uh, on the host agreement, we have the impact fee as part of the host agreement. Was that right. five thousand? Yes, listed in here. Yep. I know, but that says we're uh, for a max of three percent. So Correct. When we have the impact fee, we have to provide stuff in order to prove that to the state down the line. That's so, correct. So it may not be three percent. They look for uh, the impact to the town, and I'm sure we can justify that with the uh, the impact to our our community. That's on you then. <laughs> <laughs> I need an intern to help me out. <laughs> we think it'll be much lower. No, <laughs> I tried. I'd be happy it's much higher. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> anybody, anybody else got a question? Nope. All right. So, uh, could I have a motion to authorize them to enter into an? Uh, Negotiations. Negotiations for an agreement Second. with You Can Be Company LLC. Motion made by Alan, seconded by Mary. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. There you go. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you. All right. Good Next luck up. With the state. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for the help, sir. You bet. Good luck. We'll be talking soon. I'm sure. Thank you very much. So All right, so uh, we got the community rating system presentation. You want, you want to do that now? So yes, so I do. <laughs> All right, I, um, I want to try to get you out of the way. That's what I'm trying to do. Get, start, try to get rid of me. Huh? Yes, mostly because I know you've been here all day as well. <laughs> Oh, our, yeah, we already have this, right? Yeah. It's just going to... Oh, okay. That's a good thing. Good thing. And CRS, can't remember. Give this one to oh, that's the same thing. Thank you. We're good. I read it, too. Mm. Thank you. Pretty noisy over there, aren't you? I know. You know what? I'll I'll go. Uh, We've got this. You got this. Come on, you can do this. I'll go without slides. You can do it. Go for it. <laughs> The uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency, which everybody knows about the federal government, has a national flood insurance program, <clears throat> which has the firm maps, the flood insurance rate maps, and the, uh, uh, the national flood insurance um, that's available to uh, homeowners in the, in the uh, communities of uh, the U.S., in the case of the flood insurance rates that are affected, that are controlled by the, flood the National Flood Insurance Program, um, there's a, a program called the Community Rating System that allows the town, if it shows proof of its active attempt to manage and protect people in the floodplain, that you can get a discount available to homeowners with this community rating system. It's an application that's made to the state. There's a point system from within 19 categories of, of activities that support the, uh, the uh, application. And typically, uh, there, there are 10, 10 classifications, 10 rankings of communities, and there's different percentages of, of uh, insurance discount that's available. 
most communities, and I'd say 80% of the ones that apply, get a 10% uh, or 15% discount that's available to homeowners in, within the, the, uh, the special flood hazard areas. Those, uh, those zone, what's called the zone A or the zone V, the wave action zone or the, the uh, still water flooding that, that affects uh, so many uh, homeowners in a coastal environment like we have. Um, it, the, the point system requires that we have uh, uh, at least an elevation certification. That is, every building that gets built within the town get a, a, an elevation cer certification by an engineer and surveyor that says where that, that building uh, lies in relationship to the floodplain that, that, that surrounds it. So. It's information that we have to store and to have available, and I think it can be done quite easily through the building department. The other is to have a, a flood management plan in place. So something that we're doing right now with the, with the municipal vulnerability program of the state and the multi-hazard mitigation plan that we're preparing. We're looking specifically <clears throat> at the flood plan impacts and what the opportunities are to, to protect, assess the, the potential um, <clears throat> problem and to uh, to uh, mitigate it in some way so that we reduce the cost to the town and to the townspeople about about the uh, recovery from the uh, flood event <clears throat> um, you can the the top category the number one category is a 45 percent reduction in in uh, flood insurance rates but I only know of one town in, in the United States in the last I looked that had that, that top rating because the, I'm, I'm assuming that they are a town on top of a mountain with very little floodplain involved. It's, it's not easy to get through the, the program, but um, uh, what I'm suggesting is that the, you uh, sponsor the, the action to go ahead and, and to uh, develop this plan in the community rating system. And let's see how far we can get in terms of <clears throat> getting the, the program rating that can give a reduction of uh, insurance to uh, the homeowners in town. Well, I mean, certainly we are probably more susceptible to these, this type of insurance than probably most towns. So anything we can save our ratepayers is huge. Absolutely. So, I mean, I'm all in favor of doing whatever it takes to to get any kind of discounts, especially the way that they went when they raised all these things up. I mean, this is, you know, gotten out of hand for some people. 10% isn't a lot, but the investment of time into it is going to help the, the town. Well, if you're paying $18,000, 10% is a few bucks. <laughs> More than a few, yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you're in the, one of those velocity zones, you know, you're paying big money. Correct. So this is a way we can, we can save the homeowners. We do the work up front, and the homeowners get the benefit. Mm -hmm. of so the, what, what do you insurance. need from us exactly? What do you want us to do? Vote, vote to authorize Vote them. to authorize you to, to pursue it? Exactly. So moved. Second. Motion made by Peter. Seconded by Mary. Any discussion? Well, go ahead, Alan. Quick comment. We yep. need to thank the state of California. <laughs> thank the state of California and Maxine Waters for this whole FEMA mess that we're dealing with. Well, I'd also like to thank uh, whoever in NOAA is in charge of this because apparently they think we're next door to Florida. <laughs> it's only 1,800 miles. It's only a few miles. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. abstaining, it's unanimous. There you go. Thank you very much. So what else do you have for me tonight, with me tonight? Uh, the performance bond. I wanted to have... Uh, approved for the solar farm. This is a decommissioning okay. bond for the You just need a vote to uh, release the bond. To release the bond? No, to accept the bond. Accept it. That's right. So we're going to release it before we accept it. Yeah, I was going to say. Huh? Name of the bond company? All right. I don't have the bond with me. Uh, Argot Insurance Company? Yeah. He's yeah, got money bags in his car for you, Alan. How much is the bond? Not yet. <laughs> It should say right. Uh, one million eight hundred ninety-nine thousand thirty-three 
Oh, and what's okay. the property reference here? And the only thing I want to try to make uh, why why you're here is one of the things that's been going on over the years, and, and to know not your fault by any stretch of the imaginations, is the planning board has been releasing some bonds, and they have never gotten our vote to release them. Yeah. And they cannot release a bond. All they can do is say, yeah, it's okay, and then we have to release the money. But we have seen money that's been turned back without any vote of this board. So I wish you would keep an eye on that in the future, if you don't mind. Will do. Okay. All right. Move to uh, to uh, accept the bond. Alan's got a question. Alan, oh, go ahead, Alan. Uh, what I'd also like to see is when we have bonds and stuff, a lot of times people put a bond out and then they'll farm it out to three or four companies like they do with house mortgages. I think we need to be notified to make sure we're acceptable when they do that. It's a very common practice. Okay, thanks. You may end up with a company like in Idaho or something, things like that. Okay. Uh, motion, please. Uh, move that we approve Except. the release of this. Accept. 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 Accept the bond. <laughs> the bond. So we're releasing already. So you move acceptance of the bond. Second. Second. By Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. abstaining, it's unanimous. So that's it for you tonight, right? Yes, thank you very much. Awesome. Three, three, we got you out of here in one yeah, night. Yeah. Perfect. How do you like that, Amapples? All right, next oh, we up. Got the dog hearing. Next up, we go to the dog hearing. Yeah, we got that now, right? You know, how about, can I get the coalition out of here first? Well, are they going to be doing a long report? How long is your report, the coalition's report? Five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes? Are the dog people okay with that? Another five or ten minutes? Everybody's shaking their head, so I'm going to go right. with that. As long as you're shaking your head. My chair just deflated. <laughs> Look at me. You've lost hydraulics. I've lost hydraulics, and I just changed chairs. I'm getting too heavy, apparently. I'm get you don't say it. Don't say a word. <laughs> don't no, say no, it. I know what you're thinking. Much stuff over here. All of a sudden, I'm deflated. <laughs> I could be, I, was, I might feel like I'm on my knees. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't even know if I can get this back up or not. Which mm. is that chair on you? You end up with a chair that. in the back. Which, what the hell? What's this thing? Somebody's, Somebody's charger for their charger. computer. Who's got a charger in? I don't know. It's all around the chair. No kidding. It's not going to be no, charging anything at this rate. It's just going to come this way. Wow. What the heck? Anybody want an Apple charger? All right, let's back up. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it's for a MacBook let's or something. Let's see how long it lasts. Oof. Really? Should it go down? You're hanging in there for now. Should go down slow. <laughs> go easy, Tiger. <laughs> go easy, Tiny. Is that what you're going to say? Look at it. Hey. I'm going down. You want this chair? No. I, it doesn't matter. I'll just stay on my Where if you sit there, we won't even see the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> under You'll be under the table. There's, uh, no, um, Ken's out in the hall still. Ken, is Ken still out in the hall? Hey, Ken. Ken. Kenny, do you know how to make this uh, projector system work here? It's on, but it's not. Oh, there you go. A little plug-in might help, right? Plugging in might help. Look at that, huh? My work here is done. <laughs> Good job, Ken. All right. I don't know that we have the. I don't think you have a port for that. Right port. Hold on. So this is like a test, right? Yeah, it's a test. Yep, we do this to everyone. Hide the USB cords. Out yeah, exactly. <laughs> Play with their chairs. Yeah, we mess with people's Make you chairs. fight for your presentation. <laughs> See, Ken said his work was done, but it isn't. No. No, Ken. Oh, our computer. You got to pick a computer or something. HDMI, yeah, there you go. Oh, look at that. Thanks, Ken. She's got it. <laughs> 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 Just stand there. It only behaves when you're in the room. Hey. All right. Nice. All right. Let's go for it. You got it. 
I'm giving you seven minutes. Yep, I'm working. <laughs> no, go for it. Making me work for it here tonight. Um, thank you very much. My name is Catherine Garofoli. I'm the director of the Onset Bay Center with the Buzzards Bay Coalition. A couple of weeks ago, I came and before you talking about our sublease to Namaskit Kayak Center and requested a, some time to get in front of you to give you an update about the exciting progress we're making at the Onset Bathhouse. Um, I have Tom Tucker here. He is our program manager. He's helping with the development of the programs going to be bringing to the community this year. So um, again, I just want to thank you. So the last time that I was here, uh, we were talking about different plans, but I have some <coughs> exciting news. So the building itself at 186 Onset Ave is about 85% complete. We're anticipating opening by mid-June. We basically have to because we're getting ready to launch the registration for our program soon. So in this given year alone, we're hoping to engage 850 people at the Onset Bathhouse. That's 672 children and about 168 adults. And those are very modest estimates. We are really anticipating a lot of interest in the facility. We're bringing a lot of new programs that will engage the community and uh, just finding different ways to get people to use the facility itself. We're going to be offering a whole slew of pro uh, programs that don't just strictly range for youth, but also for adults. And it will have um, a lasting benefit on the actual residents and visitors to Wareham. We're going to be using a lot of our partnerships that we've already cultivated, specifically with uh, Gary the Harbor Master, um, with the YMCA um, in Wareham. We're going to be working with the um, Department of Marine Fisheries to help host learn to fish clinics and things like that. So we've already made some really great connections throughout the um, region to help us with putting on programs that people will really want to participate in. Some other things that we're working towards um, is obviously trying to figure out um, how best to suit the needs of the youth here in Wareham. So one of the main components of the programs we're developing is the youth programs in the summer. And as you remember, last year um, we hosted a small subset of sailing and marine ecology programs out of Burgess Point. And that was very successful. We had a great partnership with the Wareham Public School System along with the Boys and Girls Club, and we anticipate having that continue. One of the premier um, programs we're going to be hosting is a full day program offered in one week sessions that'll start June 29th and run all the way to August 14th. That's seven weeks, so we're nearly doubling what we offered last year. Um, we're going to have open enrollment, but we're also going to have a lot of scholarship availability for uh, that will be prioritized to the residents of Wareham. Um, we're going to continue that partnership, as I said. We've had a successful relationship with the CARE program in that we continue to receive Department of Ed money that helps fund staff, supplies, and um, different training opportunities to keep our curriculum fresh. And then um, that actual program itself will focus on um, integrating all the different parts of what we're hoping to host. It'll have a sailing component. It will have marine exploration. It will have the swimming component. We'll have paddling. So it'll be a full day adventure for the kids that participate and making it exciting to be outside and to actually um, experience the new facility itself, which is something that they haven't had before on Onset Beach. We're also going to host a number of half-day programs that are more specialized. We're talking about a learn to sail, a beginner sail program. Uh, we're talking about a beginner sail program for high school age students that will be separate to encourage them to attend, that will be geared towards the older ages. We're going to have intermediate sailing for those who have had some minimal sailing experience and are looking for a little bit further instruction. And then a paddling adventure that will focus on um, learning to kayak and learning to paddle board. So as you can see, we're going to be engaging in a lot of different activities that will get the kids outside. But again, all of this costs money, right? And we're really excited for the fact that we have the ability to provide scholarships to a lot of children this year. We're talking about 
scholarships to between 247 and 328 youth. And that can vary. Um, we're talking, if they fall into a certain bracket, we're talking about 100% reduction to a different bracket that's 75% 75, 75 discount on the program cost, which makes it really reasonable. At the same time, though, the actual programs themselves will be very reasonable for, an, for a family that's outside of that range. Um, so the scholarships are going to be prioritized for the residents of Wareham and the village of Buzzards Bay. And then secondary, if they are um, still available, we're going to have them available to people outside of Wareham that are in the general Buzzards Bay watershed area and prioritize them that way. So we're, we're looking to really provide a lot through our partnerships as well as through this scholarship program that the coalition has been able to create. Besides the regular structured programs, we're going to hold um, morning programs that'll, that hopefully will incorporate yoga on the beach, that will get people out to Wicket's Island, learn to shellfish, um, along with a number of one-off events that will be geared towards families to get them out with us on the weekends if they're visiting in town. Um, you know, a couple of hours, a couple times a month with specialized programs that get them excited for um, learning about our Onset Bay. And then, as I mentioned earlier, our partnership with the Wareham Care um, Program, we're looking into a 16-week after-school program where we would engage kids interested in our um, facility and our mission and get them over to the site and have them working on potential boat building, navigation, marine ecology, just getting them out of the classroom with some hands-on learning experiences. So we're pretty excited about what we're building here with the hopes that this uh, center will be a hub for everybody. And it's not just geared towards youth. We're wanting to attract a lot of adults uh, through a number of different sessions. Uh, Recently, we became members of the U.S. Sailing Association, where we've been registered as an adult first sail center. That means that we're going to be hosting events for people that do not have any sailing experience for them to come and test it out with us with an instructor to get on it on the water and pique their interest in how much fun sailing can be. We're going to host a Tuesday racing series for people who do have experience, and then our regular guided tours with Namaskit Kayak Center um, through our full moon kayaks and our regular Wednesday nights. So we're going to maintain that partnership with them as well. So there's really something for everybody here at the Onset Bay Center. And that's really what we've been um, working towards. The coalition has invested three and a half million dollars into making this happen. We're also going to have a lot of presence at some of the good old standby events that are happening in Onset. And as somebody that um, doesn't live in Wareham, and specifically onset, it's really nice to see the different events that come out of such a small area with such a vibrant um, Onset Bay Association and the different community leaders that you have there. So we're planning on ha being a direct part of all the regular events that are happening in onset and in Greater Wareham to just have more of a presence and be a good neighbor um, so that people can feel comfortable coming to us. On top of the fact that I know that there are a lot of people that are very interested in what we're doing at the Onset Bathhouse, we're going to be holding open houses so people can come and take a tour of the facility and see what we're up to. So that's basically what we have going on. The exciting news is that our youth program registration will be open on Friday. Um, you'll have to fill out an application form. We'll go through and see if you qualify for scholarships and then uh, for, we'll go from there in terms of getting you registered for one of our weekly sessions. But these are the great things that are happening and when we are ready for our ribbon cutting to make a formal announcement about a date, I'll make sure everybody has an invitation to join us um, as we celebrate the opening. Awesome. Yeah. Alan, questions? Anybody? No. No? Again, you know, what they're going to provide for Warham, you know, for the residents is something we've never really expected and really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Jim, anything? Oh, well, it looks like you have a lot of good programming for the kids. And like you say, get them outside, get them interested in being outside. So thanks. Thanks. Anybody else? Yeah, I just wanted to say that, you know, the numbers that you're, you recited uh, for the families that could expect to get 
some sort of financial assistance to uh, be part of these programs is very impressive. You know, one of the one of the things that uh, I think from the beginning uh, probably could have everybody could have done a little bit better uh, job of was getting the word out that this isn't going to be something exclusive. Uh, this is going to be inclusive. This is going to greatly benefit kids uh, who don't know how to swim, don't know how to sail, uh, who don't know how to take advantage of the fact that we live on the water. And it goes beyond uh, just taking advantage and having a nice day out on the boat. Uh, the programs they're teaching will save lives because people who don't know how to swim drown. Thank you. Okay, Mary. Nope. Excellent job. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's uh, this is we're this is excited. getting more and more exciting now that we're getting closer and closer. So it's absolutely. Kind of There's still a long way to go, but we're we're thrilled with how far we've come in the you know last two months that we've been working together. And awesome. you know, I I have to say that we're very fortunate to have such a great partnership with the town. Your leadership through Derek Sullivan and the board of selectmen. We're very thankful for how supportive you've been. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, we're going to go to the dog hearing. Uh, <laughs> everybody's sitting there like, oh, yeah, it's about time. <laughs> All right. We kind of hold these because sometimes they take a little bit of time, and we like to uh, spend as much time as we can to get them done properly. So uh, can you come? Can everybody who's going to be involved in the hearing come down, please? And uh, some of you can take seats here. And... Um, I'm going to turn this over to Peter because I let him run the dog hearing. So, okay, if you'll have a seat, please. Okay, he's yeah. a dog Thanks. lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than that, but that's okay. Um, can we have a roll call vote to uh, motion to open the hearing? Yes. Can we make a motion. Motion made by Alan, Second. seconded by Mary. Roll call, P Alan. Yes. Uh, Jim. Yes. Mary. Yes. Patrick, yes. Yes. Peter, yes. We're in. We've got the hearing over. <clears throat> okay. I'll read the complaint letter from the animal control officer into the record. Uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, complaint of vicious or barking dogs under General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 157, January 27th, 2020. <laughs> I hereby make complaint hereon that the dog owned or harbored by Samiat Finney, 19 Nicholas Drive, Wareham, Mass. 02571 is dangerous by reason of the dog described as a one-year-old male blue cane corso has had three unprovoked bites to humans resulting in injury. December 28th, 2019 to a FedEx driver making a delivery to the address above while the dog was tied outside in the front yard of the dog owner's address. The dog had bitten the driver's hand when he reached out to let the dog smell it. January 4th, 2020, to a 12-year-old who was in the house playing with the child who resides there. Uh, the dog had bitten her foot, resulting in puncture wounds. And January 25th, 2020, to a woman while exiting her motor vehicle at 23 Nicholas Drive. The dog was being walked by the owner's son on a leash when the victim reached her hand out to the approaching dog for him to sniff it. The dog latched onto her right hand, resulting in a broken hand with lacerations. This complaint is made under the penalties of perjury. Cheryl Gorviat Dill, Wareham Animal Control Officer. Uh, would everybody who intends to testify please raise their right hands and repeat after me. I state your name. Sammy Atfinney. Do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I do. I do. Thank you. Um, we'll hear now from the animal control officer about this. Uh, are there any other witnesses here to testify in this matter tonight who want to be heard? Okay, seeing none, then this is, is going to be you three, so. Yes, and I'd just like to make it known that all three of the victims were notified of the hearing by me personally and directly, so they opted not to attend. Okay, thank you. Um, can you describe uh, what your investigation has shown in this? So I was not a witness to any of the actual situations. I was made aware of them after the fact. Um, we did have the FedEx driver in December. Then we had um, with the girl <sighs> one day before the woman. The, so we had two that were back to back. The girl and the woman were one day apart. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> so the first one, the dog was on their property. I was not there, so I'm going by what the two different people have told me. I'm just. Mm -hmm. giving their account of it and the dog was 
on the property contained on a leash. We've never had the dog loose. I've never had a complaint of the dog loose. The dog was licensed. The dog was vaccinated. And the FedEx driver was making delivery to the property. And what the FedEx driver explained to me is he saw the dog. He saw the dog leashed. He approached the dog. He put his hand out, and the dog bit his hand. So that was situation number one. Um, he did have some lacerations to his hand, but he never sent me a photograph of his injury, so I don't have any detailed account of what happened at that time. Um, I then received a bite report from, was it a friend of yours? A uh, friend of my aunt. Okay, so there was a there was a girl in the house, and she would, the kids were all playing together, and the dog somehow bit one of the children's feet. Um, the thing I want to keep in mind here is I don't know if any of you are familiar with this type of dog, but this is a really large dog. It's a very large dog, and if it wanted to seriously injure the child, I feel that it would have. It, as far as I know, because the mother of that daughter did not send me any photographs, did not give me a statement, so I'm just getting limited information. Um, the injury was a couple puncture wounds, not serious. Now, as far as I understand it, and again, I'm getting all of this third party, um, a short time later, a day or so later, the third victim, she was a couple doors down. She stated that she was getting out of her car and that, I, were you the one walking her? Yes. yes. And this young man was walking her. Um, I wasn't there. He was, so it'd probably be better to come from him. Um, but the woman did tell me that the dog was leashed, wasn't off leash, it was leashed by the young man, and that she approached the dog and she put her hand out to the dog. That injury was serious. Um, the dog bit her hand and it resulted in broken bones. Um, and I did get photographs of that. So that's why we're here today, because we have a very large dog who could inflict serious injury um, and has shown to do that and so we definitely want to take measures to prevent anybody else from getting injured um, and that's why we're here today no we don't have any she said she has pictures I do have photos of the last victim okay and I can submit those I also <clears throat> I have a few things for you folks so I have the dogs were like the dog was licensed and registered I have the hospital report on the girl who was bitten, and it has very limited information on her actual injury. There was no um, photograph. There was no additional information, so I can't give you a lot of detail on that. I do have the quarantines from the bites that we issued. <clears throat> I'll give you a copy of all this. And then I have photographs of the third victim. She did send us photographs of that. So, and I have a report from the FedEx driver. I didn't investigate that, I actually was away. Um, so the report is not mine, but I can give all of those to you. Yep. Uh, while you're passing those out, um, I guess I would ask uh, the dog's owner, uh, do you agree with the facts as they've been presented by the animal control officer, which is that on three separate occasions, uh, the dog has bit people? Yes. Okay. Um, do you agree with how she's characterized things in the first instance, the FedEx driver, you know, approached the dog? In the second instance, it was kids, uh, were they roughhousing or something like that? Exactly what happened upstairs, I mean, <clears throat> I did call the dog downstairs because I could hear them roughhousing upstairs. And as I'm getting the story from the kids that were upstairs, he was upstairs with them. They were horsing around. I could hear them on the floor. I was telling them to bring the dog downstairs and the little girl was pulling my, my sister is 12 years old. So that's why she is, has younger friends playing upstairs. And he was, she was actually shutting the door when she, my sister was trying to open the door to let the dog out and pulling her hair. So I think the dog was be agitated and that's what happened. But he, it, my son does play rough with the dog and we've tried to correct that behavior. He's been in training, the dog's been in training since he was nine months old. So when he sees action, he wants to get in. He doesn't, the dog doesn't know his size. She did get bit and I'm not saying that she didn't get bit at all, but it was like his canine tooth. Like it wasn't, it was more like a rough housing type of bite than a 
malicious, I'm going to get you type of bite. I totally agree with the third one was, I mean, he was, a, we've had a muscle on him since the first bite when we go walking just that time he didn't have one on. I wasn't home at the time. He's been in training classes. I've done, I'll continue to do everything I need to do. He is, I have an appointment with an actual canine trainer because before this happened, before the third bite even, before, when the first bite happened, I talked to my veterinarian and I talked to my current trainer that I had and I had, and he would, they both actually gave me the same canine trainer to train him because of his specialty type of breed. So, I mean, I've been trying to be proactive with everything I can do to the dog. I mean, he is one years old and I know that he's big and the dog doesn't know his size and we've taken different things that we're trying to do differently with the dog, but we love the dog and I know he's really not a malicious dog. I mean, I have pictures of the kids like basically on top of the dog and under the dog. Like he's, he isn't that type of dog. I know what it looks like here, but he, he just isn't like he was out. I, he, and the only reason why he was out by himself on the deck is he just, it was bad timing. I have rocks all on the side of my house for him to go to the bathroom. And that's where he, you know, does his business and the UPS guy happened to come at the same time. He's not usually out by himself. I don't have a pen for him, which I will get a pen for him. I will do whatever it takes to keep this dog safe and other people safe from the dog. Okay, thank you. I have um, some things here from the canine trainer. When he was on quarantine, I called um, Cheryl and asked her permission to take him for an evaluation. I have... Um, his temperament from the breeder and from the, I know that the, what I, I make no mistake, I knew what kind of dog I was getting. I know exactly his temperament. I know what he's capable of. I know what he does. And I've, even before I bought him, I had his training in place and, and things like that because I wanted to be responsible with such a big dog. So, I mean, I do, I have all of his, like his temperament from the vet and his two, the two trainers and the, canine place that will take him on uh, March 3rd. Um, it's like a uh, they send him out. He gets sent there for a three-week training, and they train him there. Um, I want to ask the young man, so how did the dog bite the individual when you were walking them? What, tell, tell me how that occurred. Um, the I was walking the dog in, on the, out on the street, and she had come out from her car and asked if she could pet the dog. And I said no, but her hand had already been out and the dog lunged at her hand. Okay. All right, that's good. And, yeah. um, so uh, I guess it matters what the recommendations are of the, of, uh, since yeah, I have I think, she stipulated. And yeah, I, she stipulated to the, to the facts that the, bite, the bites occurred, and I think uh, her recitation was pretty much the same as the animal control officers, so I don't think we have any factual disputes here about what happened. Uh, we don't have any of the, uh, the victims here. The, to, the victims, are act, two of the victims are actually my friends. I mean, it was... And still your friends? Yes, believe okay, it good. or not. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, uh, the other one is a... I don't know her. She's a neighbor... She's my neighbor. I know the neighbor. It's mm -hmm. his grown-up daughter, so I don't really know her personally. But the other yeah. two, I actually know personally. Okay. Um, are there any questions for the board of either the animal control officer or the dog owner at this point? I have letters if you guys want to see them from the canine people no, and the fine. trainer. And uh, I, I don't have any questions right now. Okay. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Well, let's get the recommendations first. Well, I usually would do that afterwards when well, we deliberate, no? Well, let's get them on the record first, okay. and then we can... Go ahead, put them on the record. Yeah. So, I'll be honest with you. I've spent a lot of time... Um, spent a lot of time and, and emotion in this specific situation. Um, I looked at a lot of factors. It's, it's a really large dog, and it's only one years old, so it's going to get a little bit bigger. It's a male, and it's a tight-knit neighborhood, so obviously my concern is the safety of everybody in that neighborhood. And I feel that that's also the, the owner's concern. 
Um, as soon as I approached her on the situation and started investigating it, the very first thing I noticed when I pulled up to the property is she had already posted beware of dog signs. Um, she had already purchased a muzzle. She had already arranged dog training. So when I looked at all of the things that she had already proactively done and the fact that the dog was already licensed and the dog was on a leash, I felt that this was somebody that I could work with and that I could trust to be responsible because this is a, this is a very serious situation as far as this dog, what it could do. So we really want to spend a lot of time thinking about it. So I, I weighed everything when I came up with my recommendations. And I did send her a letter prior to this because I immediately wanted to take some kind of action, um, knowing that this dog nipped somebody and pretty much broke their hand um, while he was on a leash, that we didn't want to take any chances. And she was immediately on board with my suggestions. So that reinforced my belief that if we place safety restrictions on this dog, I feel very comfortable that the dog owner will be on board and she'll comply. What I want to feel comfortable with is that her son understands the importance of not walking the dog without a muzzle, um, that he's only to be yeah. walked by an adult. Yeah, he doesn't want to come at all anymore. It's so we want to make sure that he's on board because it's easy when you're a kid and you're not thinking and you have a pet dog and, you know, without thinking. And I think after what happened the third time, I'm sure that he would be on board with us and understand the seriousness of the situation. So um, that is the most important part that I wanted to make sure everybody was on board with. Um, so it would be my recommendations that the dog be humanely restrained, that the dog would be confined outdoors in a secure and closed pen when unattended, and we've already spoke about that, and she was Absolutely. actually willing to get it going before the hearing, but I said, you know, let's wait until the hearing and see what we decide before you spend that money, so she is willing to do that. Um, that the dog only be walked by an adult on a short, strong lead and with a muzzle. Um, I also would like to see proof of insurance coverage for the dog. We've already got three bites in a very short period of time, so it's a good idea. And that the dog owner provides some type of identification, like a microchip, so if, God forbid, this dog ends up anywhere else, we will be able to identify him. Okay. Questions okay. from the board or anything? Um, how big is this dog right now? 98 pounds. Is he neutered? No, and he will be when when he gets the... I was going to wait two years for him to get neutered because they say that's what's best for him, but yes, he will be neutered on after March 3rd because I don't want him to have any open staples when he, if he can go to that um, training class. So when it, he'll have the microchip when he goes to sleep for the new, for, to be neutered. Thank you. Anything else? Can we have a motion to close the hearing? Mary? Okay, okay Alan. Second. Seconded by Mary. Roll call. Roll call. Alan? Yes. P, um, Jim? Yes. Mary? Yes. Peter? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Okay. So, uh, why don't you bring, you send the, bring the recommendations up, please? Or you can put them right in there. Yeah, I just want to say one thing for me, okay? Three bites, no matter how they happen, is not a good situation. I as you completely well know. agree with you. You can't have that. So we're going to put these stipulations in place, and you got to do whatever you can because if he came here again, that would be very bad. Yeah. I, he I will not come here again. He, he will never not, be here it would again. Not be a good situation for you. I can tell you. Not as far as I'm concerned. It's it, three bites. Three, you know. I understand people reached out and did whatever, but you should have. Somebody has to be there to say no. You know, whatever, and make sure and protect the the people, especially from a hundred pound dog. You know, uh, that's that's gonna. That, if he closes his jaw, that's a pretty good bite. Yeah. Right. You know? I agree. So. Anyway, go ahead. It's it's sad, believe me. I'm, nobody wants anything with dogs. I mean, I, I have a dog myself, and I get a little. Of course, he's a golden, so he's angel. He's an angel, so. Yeah, I've got something less than an angel myself. He's he's just he wouldn't he wouldn't but you could you could bite him and he wouldn't bite you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to add neutered to the bottom part or? 
No. That's fine. Right, That's I'm not. Be done then. All right. So, do you want to make the motion? the recommendations. So, you want to make a motion to approve the recommendations of as the, presented. Uh, as presented. Uh, Senator, sure. Second. Second. All right. Motion made by Mary, seconded by Allen. Is there any other discussion? No. What's the height of the enclosure? Six feet. I just bought it today, actually. It's in there. But thank you. That's good, though. It's it was six feet, got and it's on mm -hmm. the bottom. There's a fence actually on the bottom, so we can't dig out, and it only opens to my backyard. Good. And we'll probably have, I'll probably request that you put something over the top just to make sure that the dog. Not can, a climber. Yeah, yeah, especially at that size of a dog. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you for coming here and thank being you. honest and dealing with it. I appreciate that. Thank yes. you. I appreciate it. I don't know what just happened, but thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Every... It's okay. Okay. Yeah, just to okay. the list of it's things, okay. you got to take care of that. Cheryl will help you out. We'll work thank together. you guys yeah. very much. We'll I really together. do appreciate your understanding. This has been torture, and I, I appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yes. you. It'll be better for once you implement these measures, it'll be safer for everybody, and you'll, you'll be able to enjoy your dog a lot more. I agree. You don't have to worry as much. Thank you. All right, next up Thanks. is a discussion of Warren articles for the special town meeting and the annual. I think the annual, is there anything to discuss on that? I don't I think, think so, we're not yet. Done with that. Right, but the, there are some to go on to the special. All right, Article 1, Title Harbor Master uh, Service Permits for Appropriations. Okay. See if the town will vote to transfer the sum of fifteen thousand. <laughs> see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of fifteen thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars from the onset from the harbor map, harbor services permits receipts reserved for appropriations account to be transferred to the harbor master's maintenance and improvements account or take any other action. Can I have a motion to put it on the on the warrant, please? Motion made by Allen, okay. seconded by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, abstaining. Okay, it's on. What else? Um, this is town meeting warrant article, Community Preservation Act fund article. Um, yeah, this is the one for the for the softball field, I believe. See if the town will vote. You can come to down if you want. Appropriate from the community mm. preservation undesignated fund or any other monies available in the community preservation fund under the category of recreation a grant for the Wayham girls softball league How you the doing? sum of thirty thousand dollars for Good a mower evening. storage unit gate upgrades to the softball fields at westfield recreational complex 98 charlotte first road wayham okay motion by allen seconded Second. by peter um so you guys are uh uh, really improving that place a little bit and this is your second bite of the apple which you know is always a good thing that you, you keep keep doing it so that's good uh, is there anything you want to tell us state your names in the mics for the uh, my name is Joseph Nuru I'm the treasurer of the organization I'm uh, one of the head coaches also yeah I'm uh, Jamie Allen I'm the vice president of the Wayham girls softball league uh, also a coach okay. we're, we're basically just we're looking to you know, improve player safety and in any way that we can and, you know, improving the fields themselves with the softball ready mix and also being able to uh, store everything with the purchases of the storage containers because that's a pretty big expense for us every month being a, um, a nonprofit organization. We're, we're paying for the, the containers now as they pretty much, you know, sit there dormant as uh, the softball season isn't going on just yet. But like I said, it's a pretty big expense. So as we make the purchase of those, we'll be saving on those every month. And those savings will probably go towards um, other safety measures, maybe new equipment and things like that. And also the new fence that's going to be built in on field number one will help with bringing in heavy equipment, bringing in um, field maintenance equipment, lawnmowers and things like that. And it'll also help with in the event, God forbid, there's a, an injury on that field, the field is enclosed and the gate's pretty small, so we can't get uh, first responders into there, an ambulance, anything like that. We actually had um, an accident last summer that thankfully turned out to be really well. It wasn't a really bad injury or anything, but we couldn't get anyone onto the field, and we literally had our player laying at home plate while being uh, worked on there, and they had to you know, drag the uh, stretchers in and everything as opposed to being able to drive onto the field. 
So in the event that something like that happens again, obviously we hope it doesn't, but um, even something as, I don't want to say minuscule, but something as, as small as a fence, just this one being wider than what we have now will definitely help with uh, player okay. safety. All right, so all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous, so we'll put it on the warrant. Now remember, you still have to get to town meeting because it'll require a vote at town meeting, okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Good luck, Thanks. Jason. Nice job. All right, so that's it for the special for those two. I just, one thing I wanted to ask the board uh, regarding the special, uh, Mark St. Jean out at Stone Path Malt um, would like to be able to, in addition to having a you know, pouring license uh, for the beers that you know, his, uh, what do you call it, malts go into and so on and so forth and, and the way he operates under his current license, he'd like to also be able to sell uh, six packs, for example, of the beers that his clients brew. Uh, there's really no special particular provision under state law to do that. So I've talked with Representative Gifford to see if we could file a special act and put in language along the lines of notwithstanding any provision of Chapter 140 to the contrary, blah, 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 that would allow him to also sell uh, beer from the people who use his, uh, his product to make the beer. Yeah, I mean, that's, it sounds logical. The only problem is you're creating a package store, as you well know. Mm -hmm. And I'm not yeah. so sure that they're going to say, yeah, go ahead, let's create that package store. It's kind of like, it's kind of like I, don't, I don't know that I, I don't want to go quite so far as saying a package store. I think it's more an expansion of sort of what we consider the farm license. It's not yeah, but so it's, it's, as soon as you take a 12-pack of beer and sell it to somebody, that's a package store. Yeah. yeah. So they're going to have to make that call. Not us. The legislature, but... but you know, I was I was going to ask the board if there was any uh, any issue with coming up with a request for special legislation to try to do this to help any these people out. Any questions over there? I see. Yeah, I'd like to ask um, through you, or, uh, I'd like to ask through you through the town attorney. Yeah. Um, can, can he do that as a retail, just beer and wine, uh, selling beer and wine as a, with a retail license for that? Well, you got to have a. Uh, we don't I'm have. The, the, uh, the we don't have a license available. Well, I, for package goods. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Selectman Minis, under Chapter 138, Section 12, there is a ca uh, Section 15. Pardon me. There is a category for beer and wine retail licenses. Uh, so theoretically, it's possible. Mm. Whether under your existing quota. You had one, um, whether the zoning would be appropriate, of course, that wouldn't be for this board to determine, but right. it is a factor. You know, whether, you know, that was appropriate, you know, there are issues that would be out there. So, theoretically, could you do it? Theoretically, yes. Thank you. Yeah, and I think in, in this instance, uh, I'm pretty sure we gave them a premises pouring license anyway. Uh, because I, if I remember correctly, we did go to the legislature to get to get an additional pouring license for them, so that they could, you know, serve out there in the first place. So this would actually, I guess, it would be an amendment of the prior legislation to allow them to also sell, uh, you it's know, package be, goods. It'll be a little tricky because one of the things that they are pretty sticklers about is that places that pour can't sell specifically, can't sell. As a matter of fact, they even uh, bring bottles in that are different on purpose so that they can't sell them you know what i mean it's a real kind of a sticky place we could ask the legislature they're the ones who have to make that call yeah you know? um well mr chairman when uh the legislature was in the process of adjusting to the repeal of prohibition it did look at the question of allowing on-premises consumption establishments to sell uh over-the-counter, if you will, in some other countries, the United Kingdom, for example, uh, you can buy uh, alcoholic beverages at the bar and carry them off the premises under certain conditions. That typically has not been the Massachusetts rule. Uh, you know, maybe in one of the, the agricultural categories, maybe they've come up with something there. So I, I certainly think that if the applicant hasn't done a thorough perusal of the uh, agricultural exemptions that are available under the Liquor Control Act, that maybe they ought to put their lawyer to the task before, before you go to the legislature. And then if 
their council doesn't see something that would fit whatever it is they're trying to do, then yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's a little sticky as far as trying to get the uh, get it under the farmer thing because the the farmer, of course, is the one who produces the alcohol. These guys don't actually produce the alcohol; they produce an ingredient that goes into the the alcohol. So that's kind of where they they fall through sort of the the cracks here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Alan, I know that uh, on bars and stuff like that, it just you can't sell stuff over the the counter per se. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's pretty been well a no no for, for years. ABC. Can't even carry it off. No, you can't do anything. But the it's bottom line is that no, no, they, it might really. save us a lot of time. Uh, why don't we reach out to Ralph Sacamoni, who's the director of the Alcoholic Beverage Commission? We have his phone that we can call him anytime we want. If you want, I can make a call tomorrow and ask him. Here's what we got. Yeah, we you know, can, what do you recommend? Yeah. We can actually. I can have Cassandra make that call and ask. Whatever you want. I just I deal with Ralph a lot. I'll, so. I'll have her make that call. It's fine. And talk to him. Because she has, she's been talking to him lately, so yeah. uh, it should work out. We'll ask, uh, ask okay. a question, see if we go anywhere. If he says, well, if the legislature lets you, then fine. Then we'll we'll think about doing something like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. You give you straight Next answer. up, any other business not reasonably anticipated the last 48 hours? No. Town administrator's report, we don't have one, right? Uh, how do you know? Because <laughs> oh, she, we've got, we've got she told me earlier. You might have sent her with a big we've one. We've got a designee. <laughs> uh, liaison reports, Mr. Um, Manise. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> go ahead, Alan. Yikes. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Oh, Jim can go. You can go first. Let's see. You know, I had a few key points. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Well, um, I have to go to the bathroom. As I said uh, <laughs> earlier, when you we do? were talking, really? do you? we um, the CMW voted to um, approve a restated uh, amended agreement, which will be coming up probably in the special town meeting. Um, I will send you. I, I sent it to uh, Attorney Bowen. I'll send you the copies and. Um, so we'll need to get moving on that you know, on the special town meeting. And also we had a, uh, a meeting of the Affordable Housing Trust last week, and uh, we're moving along nicely. It's a good group, and uh, it's kind of fun, and uh, we're moving forward. Need to help ginning up applicants? Which? To spend your money? No, no. Um, we, we, we made a decision to... Uh, to have a general program and um, up to fifty thousand dollars for um, residents from the town of Wareham, I believe, uh, to assist them in the first uh, and/or last month's rent if they meet certain guidelines, qualified qualified guidelines. Um, we're still kind of working through that, but we we. We're making some progress, you know, to offer some programs um, through the Housing Trust to help people out. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, Alan, you're up. I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> you timed that just right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead and do your thing. Something can't you wait. Go right ahead. You go wait for five minutes. We find out. Everybody leaves and lines up outside the bathroom. <laughs> Let's see. Today we have uh, put on file the. Fiscal year 2021 to 2025 TIP, which is transportation improvement uh, recommendations for Southeast Mass. Wareham has the bike path, which is scheduled for 2024 at $5,313,588. Is this the one, Alan, that's going to go down Minot Ave, yes, presumably? Sir. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be narrower lanes, correct? No. That's good, because otherwise I was going to nickname it Death Alley. No, it's going to have a separate sidewalks, et cetera. <laughs> and the other piece, which I, I mentioned earlier, which is nice to see, although it's not scheduled per se, in the supplemental list is the Wareham corridor improvements on Route 6 at Swiss Beach Road, which Mass DOT has taken up as a separate project at approximately $3,248,704. So doing a traffic light is not a simple thing these days. So we can put that on file. Is that just for the traffic light? That's for the traffic light at the section change. Wow. It's not only the traffic light, you also have to reconfigure, set, reconfigure yeah. the roads. Yikes. Well then. So if we want to do the one on uh, Tahonet Road and Route 28, you have the same kind of situation. That's why the town could definitely not afford that on its own. No. But they can 
consider it. Oh, it's, it's in the list. It's in the list. Okay, next we have the actual Route 6 coroner study, which the draft is, just came out today in my meeting. Uh, we'll put that there. It'll be in the selectman's office. Anyone wants to read it? Uh, people can make comments on it. Uh, basically, we had uh, four choices as far as whether it be a four-lane road continue or a two-lane with a third-lane turn. Uh, the majority of the responses that were given was for the four-lane with the bike path, you know, on the sidewalks. The next one up, of course, would be the three with the turning lane. Um, and they list, I think, there's seven or eight different intersections. It's interesting, the intersections from Fairhaven to here uh, are rated A through F. Well, our Swift speech is F. It's the only one. So that's why we're on a priority list. Everyone else is like B or C, but we're right up there, number one. Um, I also started to have discussions on the community center, which I've been pushing for years now. And uh, basically, DHCD uh, can help fund that, as well as EDA grant, and of course, the Age Friendly Communities Project, which has grant programs as well. So I'm starting to put pieces together, hopefully, for something down the line. We've got some property that just came up on mine and Ave that might be possible. And of course, if we do anything over at the Deca School, there might be a possibility there. So I'm working on that. I also attended the uh, meeting this past week over at the Glen Cove on the uh, horse track and casino. It was interesting that there was, uh, I say, probably about 100 seniors mostly. And they did a very nice presentation on the facility, et cetera. It was well received. Uh, today, this morning, I was over at the, of all places, the Dunkin' Donuts in West Wareham. There's a small veterans group that meets every couple weeks there. Uh, Representative Keating's uh, aide was there. Uh, the two lieutenants and Chief Walchek were also there, and they had an interesting discussion going back and forth. And that's it for me. Your timing was good, Patrick. Oh, boy. Timing is everything in life. <laughs> I got to tell you. Okay. Uh, Jim's in. Uh, Peter? No. Mary? No. All right. How do you like that? Next is the consent agenda. I don't know. What do we get? Authorization to pay a bill. Yes. <laughs> Look at Rich <laughs> shaking his head over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay the bill for attorney Richard Bowen. Gotcha. Man, he got me. <laughs> All right, I move that we approve uh, the bill for Richard Bowen, town attorney, $15,650. Motion sure made by Mary, seconded by Peter. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Next up is uh, minutes. Uh, Approval of minutes for February the 4th, my birthday. I have to abstain. That would have been last week. Make it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm it's like, just oh, the that's three of us. Somebody okay. else is going to have to make that motion. Uh, so, one of you guys are going to have to make this motion. Go ahead, Jim. You need practice. There you go, Jim. All righty. You acted as clerk. Yep. Pro time here. Uh, make a motion to accept the minutes from February 4th as written. Okay. Motion made by Jim, seconded by Alan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Opposed, abstaining. Aye. So it's three zero two. And Alan, you have to sign those. I think I have Mary's name on it, though. Huh? Mm -hmm. No, it does, Alan does it? Sign. It shouldn't have her name on it. it should it have Alan's on it, but it doesn't. Well, I'll put just your name. It out. Just cross it out. Put your name on it. <gasps> All right. Guess what that means? Motion to adjourn. Motion Second. to adjourn. Seconded by Peter. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Thank you, Wareham. Have a great week. So